What up? Here we go. Little air horn. We were watching that. We were we were enthralled with watching watching that uh, AG paintball intro. Yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that's right, Michael Cruz. How's it going, everybody out there in Spick and Span land on a lovely Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon? Look at this. We're, oh, here's these are all your pens, huh? I'm level, just, just this uh, leveling up. I actually think that one, here. that one, mine. This one might be yours, but okay, that's okay. Fine. I think none of them are mine. Actually, I thought all of these were yours. I just keep every week. I, just I have keep those white ones and putting them in this little thing right here. So what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to an awesome edition of the Spick and Span show. We're getting better um, every single time. I know. It ain't an intro without Sloan and Steve. We will uh, we'll do an outro with Sloan. I promise you there. But uh, you know, <clears throat> we've got a really exciting episode for you. We got uh, one of our all-time favorite uh, paintball players and uh, and friends and fans travel the world with him. He's going to be joining us here in about uh, the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, also, we've got uh, you know a couple of announcements. We've got we've got some giveaways. I'm still trying to figure out where when some of these players are going to go. Also, pay, shout out to Paintball Sundays. You guys made a really killer, uh, you know, little meme? Uh, little meme. That's a meme, right? I guess so, yeah. 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 Okay. Photo edit. I'm waiting for Mafia to go ahead and give me the old age ding right there when I didn't really understand that that was a meme or not, but uh, it's a soft layup to you, Ryan. Also, uh, of Harris. Huh? Of Harris. Of Harris, yeah. The meme of Harris. Yeah, yeah. The meme of Harris. That was great. We're actually getting a lot of really good uh, response from the shows in the meme world yeah you know and you guys out there are great so we appreciate all the support make sure you guys are following us spick and span dot show on instagram um you know kyle clips up some stuff that you may have missing missed here yeah, and there yeah. uh we're waiting for that segundi one where we got harris as well that was a good oh one. yeah that was a solid one that was a solid one Dude, that would have been easy you yeah have that one. yeah we should have we should have uh and then also got some giveaway stuff obviously we've got a ton of hk stuff we got some Matrix gear uh, items. Also, we have a little show and tell. Okay, we've got. Uh, yeah. We're for sure gonna raid the Hormesis uh, uh, inventory as well. Did you clip that video too, to show? What video? The one I said. Oh no, I forgot show. to, but I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be good too. We got another little video. You told me that when I showed it to you, and yeah. I wasn't in like editing yeah, clipping mode. I was just yeah. wanted to show you to see, you know, yeah. and then. Obviously, I forgot. I need to like know. Yeah, you gotta be at the. It was like a Wednesday or Thursday so. last week, yeah, right? So. Right. So we've got a really cool show and tell. Thank you, Dan Smith, in advance for the uh, for the gift that we're gonna show everybody. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, uh, we're gonna be giving away some some HK Army stuff, some Gen X stuff. We got some Matrix gear items to give away as well. Also, uh, a bunch of the Super Mega Support Status members should be getting their posters. Maybe you've already gotten them. I saw. I haven't seen any on social media yet, so obviously you haven't gotten them, right? But uh, we've got a bunch of them. You want to write up there? What's that? Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, you're gonna be getting these guys in the mail. Uh, I got a little bit of glare there, a little hot. You got some of these. So there's Steve, picture of Sloan, you know, for you. Also nice on the back sturdy. of a couple of them. Yeah, this is a. So thank you, James and Island Designs, for for printing these things pretty quickly. Uh, and on the back of them, we did like a old-fashioned kind of wheel spin so on the back of like eight of these things uh there's a little prize written on the back you know you might get uh, a free shirt design or poster design or sticker sheet from island designs he's gonna you know hit you with something so if you got a, a you know team you might want to uh and then Matrix Gear might shoot you a gift card. Gen X, we've got a bunch of stuff to send you from there. HK Army goodies. And, uh, you know, you might even get the lucky one where Nick Sloviak is going to give you a prank call. So uh, <laughs> that's going to be a fun one. I threw that in there. <laughs> the surprise to him was when I when I posted it. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I felt like He'd it was... He'd do it. I feel like, I feel he like would he honor it. Uh, speaking of Matrix and Gen X, uh, WCPPL is coming up this weekend. We're both coaching teams. I got the Narcos. And you I got, just got uh, also some pods. Yeah, you got a for, bunch of pods. Yeah, for, from Gen X for TJ Bastards. Okay. And Matrix is going to be selling pods there. So if you guys need new pods, go over to hit up Paul and the Matrix gear guys because they're going to have some freshies for you. And we'll have some uh, Spick and Span stuff up there too because mm -hmm. we're going to set up a booth Friday for Tiger Wear Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But bring the rest of our, uh, our Spick and Span mm -hmm. merch up there, maybe some posters mm -hmm. on set up. Oh yeah, and Kenny Rosenberg in the house. Go Bloodhawks! They're gonna be out there. Yeah, defending their uh, their 
I wouldn't call it the title, but uh, hopefully doing getting a better better showing. Dude, Kenny's got drive. He lo- Short and Scott bailed out mm-hmm. after the first event, and last weekend we went up not this past but the one before that we went up for Short's kid's birthday party, uh-huh. little cowboy year, theme. Year old. Yeah, um, and there was some, there was some drinking going on, and <laughs> then the next day uh, I, I get to the paintball field and there was Kenny drove up by himself, no Short his uh person that he was riding with show up for practice to keep it going so good there drive we there there we go good good uh good can't hustle say, can't yeah. say the same for short and scott Mm-mm. scott's complaining about his knees yeah. he said his he i was like i was asking him I'm like what do you mean you're not gonna play he's like oh my knees have been hurting yeah I know. since uh since world cup 2020 <laughs> so yeah poor skimp but um yeah premier league kenny rosenberg make sure you guys watch them and the bloodhawks it's gonna be going down they took ninth last time so you can really only go up from here. Yeah. You guys I saw a really cool Saturday. clip of, of Kenny the other day rapping in the snake, shooting mm-hmm. a guy, jumping into the next snake. Yep. Saw that on the HK site as well. Uh, speaking of events and teams to coach, if any of you D4 or D5 teams would like a coach, I am actually going to be available on Saturday and Sunday. Now, I will have the, the Narcos uh, on Saturday as well, most likely. Uh, the guys are playing really well at practice this weekend, so I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to make it through. We missed it by like a couple of points on the last one. But uh, you do double duty, you do quadruple duty a lot, and, yeah. it, and it works out. So, um, you know, I'll be up there. Let me know and get me uh, get me in there under the coaching staff. Yeah. So shoot me a DM or an email or call or however you'd like to get a hold of me, and I'll. I'm only not doing it now because of the booth. So Mouse mm-hmm. Mouse is going to be up there all weekend. We're going to go uh, work on it tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, and then he's going to be kind of solo manning it Friday, Saturday while I'm coaching. And then Sunday, I'm going to be there all hands on deck. So. Everybody who's out there, the WCPPL event this weekend, make sure you get a photograph with Mouse. There you go. Yeah, you got to do it. Stop by the Tiger Road booth. Get yeah. a photo with Mouse. If you get a photo with Mouse and you're wearing a Spick and Span shirt, we might just send you something. That's yeah. like almost a guaranteed winner right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Tiger Wear, you got to drop today? Uh, we do have a drop today, uh, the Terracotta Headband Rare Earth Series. It's actually right here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 5 o'clock. Also have some of these at WC as well. A little hot. Yeah, little yeah, it's kind of hard to We're getting hard a new, the, we're working on the, the camera. We got this there. boom mic thing. We got, got a lot of things. I know you hear it from us every week, but uh, we're, we're working on it. There's things going on here. Uh, so yes, yeah, I'll, and I'll Jordan let you guys Tucker. know when we get closer to that. Jordan, great, great, uh, great question. Can I buy a shirt at the booth and then take a picture with Mouse? Yes. Of course. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. All right. Uh, so let's see. Also, I've got uh, the giveaways. I know I mentioned a bunch of things. Uh, Jaws Photo gave me a, this thing right here. A little hot. You got a light back there, you know. Let me see. It's kind of how many times I say this This camera's a little hot. So a cool little, uh, little picture here of me sliding into something. Sliding into something here. And I'll sign this thing. Send it over to you. We got um, got about one, two, three of these. So thank you very much, Mr. Jaws Photo. Uh, his name is Jeff. Jeff, all the way from the Midwest. So all right, let's let's hit up. Uh, let's get Jerry on here. I think we've uh, we've we've run through the announcements, right? Oh, Roman Burt, welcome to the the crew. Uh, we will be spinning the wheel at the end of the show or towards the end of the show today so make sure you guys are all supporting the show we do really appreciate all of the support and uh, we'll make sure that uh, yeah good to go give away a bunch of stuff yeah let's hit the, right. let's hit the FaceTime so we're gonna get Jerry on the sh- on the on the line here uh, a bunch of things that we're gonna talk about I'm really excited we peaked to peak the interest we wanted him on the show for a while uh, so hold on we got him we got him there he is hold on oh yeah mute that what up? There he is. Yo, yo. What up, Jerry? So, uh, real quick, I was just kind of giving you an intro, but I figured I would just uh, I would just talk to you about it right now. Is is you know uh, we we've talked about having you on the show for a while, um, honestly, Kyle Kyle and I have. And then when I was talking to you at the event, it uh, really piqued my interest. Uh, obviously, the drive that you had, the drive that you still have, and uh, I, I entitled this show a champion's mindset. You know, because I I believe that you have that. Obviously, we have that. But you know, when I was talking to you about how hard you work and everything you do, and and you know, I thought it, I thought it, I found it very inspirational. Um, 
and uh, you know you've you've worked incredibly hard at at, uh, at what everything you've done. So um, yeah, I want I want you to introduce yourself for those who don't know you. I don't know that there's many people watching this who don't know you, but uh, yeah. Well, you know, my name is Jerry Devereaux. Mm -hmm. I've been in the sport for I mean, I I started like in you know 1999, and I played my first event. In 2002, so 2002, I played my first actual event. It was MPPL Tampa, and I remember the first person I ran up to was Oliver Lane, <laughs> and to tell him like, "Oh man, I'm a big fan," and bro, like it was it was insane to see him. And think about it, right? Like that's so long ago, right? You guys had really just started it. You guys was killing it, mm -hmm. and it was. Man, it, it was so good back in the days, man. Like, paintball was, it was different, you know, like, MPPL. It, it was different, and it was it was happy. I was happy to actually meet Oliver, meet you guys. And I was a fan back then. Mm -hmm. So think about what you guys are doing now that's still making me a fan. I'm a bigger fan now than I was back then. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, played, on a, I played on a lot of different teams. Uh, I played on I played on Infamous, you know, Infamous International. Mm -hmm. I got into dam. I finally got into damage, and we all know, you know, I got on damage and got got in a car accident. That was eight years ago now. Damn, that was that long ago, huh? Yeah, it was about eight years. February made it eight years, and um, it's been a journey. But to say that, even though that happened eight years ago. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I still have. I still have. I haven't missed the World Cup since 2002. Yeah. So when you look at it like that, right? Like, yeah, you know, I'm in a wheelchair, but for me to still have the drive to be out there, to want to be out there with you guys, knowing how hard it is that I'm not playing, right? That should give other people drives to be out there if you can. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like paintball is more of a. What do you do on a Sunday? It's on a Saturday or Sunday, and you're not out there, out there at the field. That's how I feel when you think about paintball. Sure. And trust me, I want to be out there every weekend. For sure, for sure. You know, uh, I mean, dude, I played against you uh, in Europe. I feel like we played like three seasons against you. Who do you? Uh, you were you were out in Europe. You know what was cool too is about about the hustle and the grind that you had. Is like, I mean, you had you had the contacts of every single player and team like all around the world you know i mean you see what what a lot of people don't understand it, in my life kind of it was it was very difficult you see I, I i'm from miami miami didn't really have paintball other than miami rage mm -hmm. and we all know miami rage i think what, what probably was 09 2009 is miami rage stopped being the team so I really didn't have a team to really go to. So everything I learned, I kind of learned by myself, just in the sport. So I never got a chance to be on a high-profile pro team, but it doesn't mean I was a high-profile to myself. Like I felt like I could, I could, I could battle with any other pros, but mm -hmm. I never had an opportunity to really be on a big-time pro team. Right. But when, it, but when it came to skills, everybody knew. Oh yeah, boy, he got that. So that's why I was able to go to Europe and go to Asia. Like, I ran Asia. Like, I took Asia away <laughs> Right? You know that, right? I took Asia away from you guys when we came in. You know, so, it, but it was great. Like, man, anytime I got a chance to play against you guys, especially in MPPL, when I played on Legend, those couple of seasons were really hard seasons. And we, you know, we, we at Legend did really good. I think we beat you guys out of, we beat you guys out of, um, um took you guys out. And we ended up going in, into the finals, and we won that event in D.C. Yeah, we beat you guys in overtime. Uh-huh. So, you know, so these are, like, big things for me, especially, like, you know, like, I really got a chance to do a lot. Like, I traveled the world. Like, I, one year, I, I flew, like, 150,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, when you put in these type of hours, you know, where, you, where you're home for two days out of the month, like people really don't understand the grind, but if you if you really want it, it's out there. You could actually get it. Yeah. So so let me ask you this, Jerry, because uh, there's a lot of players, and we talked about it, right? We talked about it, especially with Harrison, right? We mentioned we talked about Harrison, how hard like yeah, he's yeah. he's always on that grind, like 
Mm. He, you, you'd be at an event and all of a sudden this fool walks up, you know, yeah. eating an avocado barefoot and you're like, where'd you just come from? He's like, yeah. I've been here for a week. You know, like what, what, uh, what do you think? Like, and we'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your, your kind of grind at, at the field working hard, but what do you, what would you give advice to players out there that are watching pro players even? Cause we have a lot of pro players in here. They just don't comment. <laughs> they're just out here. They're just out here with their headphones on, you know, pretending like they're not here. But what would you what would you say to a lot of the players out there who are kind of like, how do I make it in paintball? What do I do? How what can I do? Like, like what's the best way to get noticed? I mean, someone was asking me too this. Like, how, how would I? I want to go play overseas. Where should I go? How? How do I even do this? Okay, so so we we could we could put my situation we could put my situation as a big like a, a okay so in two thousand eight. I was on RNT. We had a great, we had a great season. We won four in a row. We went to World Cup. We should have won World Cup. Miles and Rainey, when um, when aftermath broke up, Miles and Rainey went to play for Vicious, and we ended up losing to them, mm-hmm. which is why we didn't win five in a row. Like we would have did that. But I was playing so good at that event that a, that a guy from um, Casidium Day was there. And he seen me, and he watched me play, okay. and that's how I got, that's how I got to go to Europe the next next year. So, two, so starting two thousand nine, I was in Europe until my accident, pretty much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was more of a I was just out there, you know, like giving it my all because pe- people could people will notice you when you go out there and put in the work. That event, I believe, I won seven one on ones, a two on one, and a three on one. Come on, man. Like, you know, like nowadays, somebody does that. It's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're on the webcast. People will see that. But I was doing it back when there was no webcast, but everybody knew. Like, when you when it's a one-on-one and you hear the others, when you hear your, the other team say, hey, it's Jerry, don't battle, yeah. it gives you that confidence. When when Alex Frazier came to me one time, I was like, yeah, man, I looked on the wire. I saw it was you. I looked inside. Yeah. Like it, 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 it is what it is, right? When the, when a person's shot is that good, what you gonna just die? You know, if I battle this guy, I'm gonna die. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I really worked on. My craft was my craft was perfect. I like and, and and I didn't have money. I would go to the field and a bag of paint. I could practice off a bag of paint, and that's one on ones. That's snap shooting. And I did that all the time. Now, now, can you okay? Just just reiterate that part of it, right? Because how many times are we teaching clinics and we're doing this, and people just want to play points? And I've only got like a pot or two left. Like, let's play points. Yeah. You know, people tend not to want to like the majority of people tend not to want to do the hard work, but they want the results. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> you gotta, if if you look at sports itself, right? You gotta kind of look at paintball and think about real other sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When when you when you when you count the hours, right? When somebody say ten thousand hours, what does that mean? You know, ten thousand hours means a lot. So about how many hours you think Dynasty got? Thirty, forty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you go against that? What people don't understand is if you go out on a on a Saturday or on a Sunday, and there's no one at the field, and you get a case of paint. That's more than enough. You get two bags of paint. That's more than enough. If we have, yo, we're gonna we're gonna snap shoot. Uh, we let's put fifty balls. Up. Uh, yeah, we only have fifty balls to shoot, bro. That's a lot of snap shooting, and a lot of people never actually look at it like that. But you gotta put in the word because, bro, I was practicing three, four times a weekend, and that could be one case of paint. Mm-hmm. That's a bag a day, and we did that to the point where. My rec- on a regular day, I could run 40 one-on-ones. How many people nowadays could run 10 one-on-ones without throwing up? And, you know, that's funny because I remember, too, in the seven-man days, <clears throat> like, watching you and Damian Ryan pull out stuff. Like, you would make people forget about you because you didn't need to just be shooting a bunch of paint. Like, you you would be sneaky just hanging out. People would forget about you, and then you just wop, 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 shoot four people. <laughs> You know, it's it's the having discipline and paying all is so hard because when, <laughs> when I, those days you're talking about, especially when I was on Legend, you know, I, I transitioned to the Snake Corner guy. So I'm running in this, I'm running Snake Corner with 13 pods on my back, right? <laughs> and 
and I'm in, and I end up in the snake at the end of the match with no pause in my back. Like to have that discipline to really go out there and do it every time, it's hard. But I put in the work. That's a, the biggest difference between what I see nowadays is the teams that are actually doing good. It's the teams that have all their players together, they're practicing together, and they're working hard. Now that team could make it to Sunday. But that doesn't mean they'll go all the way because they don't have the experience yet. But they're putting in the work. And then eventually they get the experience to be able to beat a dynasty. Because if you let Dynasty sneak in Sunday, it's a different ball game and a different mindset. Like you guys will you It's like when, that fourth when, quarter mentality. When somebody's going against you and it's Sunday and they know like, yo, we lose this, we're gone, their knees is buckling. Why you guys have all the all the you know like you guys get the momentum and that and that's what people need to learn and the only way you can learn is by being in that position mm-hmm. at some amount of time. How many times have you guys been in that position, Ryan? I mean, yeah, yeah. It was it was funny actually. That was that was a small anecdote from the very first uh, first event with Chris Shear. You know, he's like, dude, I haven't even made it to like the national anthem before. Yeah, you know. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even like. That's like something I don't. I, I mean, I don't even think about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. Because you've been in that position so many times, you could think about a scenario five years ago that oh man, I've been in this position. And a lot of people have not been in that position. So that's the biggest difference. The biggest difference is actually putting in the time. And that's what I feel like a lot of players don't actually want to do. Yeah, I understand we have lives. Yeah, I understand there's things to do. But trust me, we we all know you do you you put in time for whatever you want to do. That three hours of the week, if you can't give pain more three hours out of the week, you don't really want to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three hours is nothing. Nine to twelve, one yeah. to four, one to, you know, like it, it's easy. You can always fit in that that ten to one, that nine to twelve, one to four. Just give it to them. Yeah. Perfect example. Like I live in Miami, and we all know the beaches, jet skis every Sunday, <laughs> and all my friends. We had we have a warehouse with thirteen jet skis in it. Every <laughs> Let's Sunday, go. My friends, my friends, every Sunday, my friends go. We have boats. We go to the sandbar, right? I would go to practice. I would have my jet ski hooked up to my truck at home. I would leave practice, run home, jump on my jump on and go to the dock, get on my boat, and ride to the sandbar by myself. I, I, you th- you don't think I want to be there at 10 and 11 o'clock with them like they are? Of course I want to do that. But to me, paintball came first. So I had to go give my four hours of paintball and then go jump on the water. That's mm-hmm. the biggest difference. And that's kind of, that's... Sacrifice. That's between, between me making it and somebody else not making it. Like, yeah, some people will be like, oh yeah, there's no money in paintball. Actually, there is if you put in the actual time. Mm-hmm. And you put in the grind, you will make it. I mean, that was like something in these translates. <clears throat> the work ethic translates outside of paintball. And I was just telling this story to Ryan yesterday. I hadn't told him. I was like, you know, Jerry's actually a big motivator motivator to me, uh, like with Tigerwear as a brand. I was like, you know, I remember a couple months ago, you called me and I was at the gym. And you kind of like ripped into me a little bit about like putting more effort and, and just pushing the brand he's like did you guys have something good here like just put more effort into it and i was like i was kind of mad when <laughs> jerry was telling me this and he could tell he's like i'm not trying to piss you off and then in the moment i was like i know i'm trying to do i know what i need to do i know and i'm like yeah and end the phone call and then like maybe like four hours later i was like i needed that thank you so this <laughs> is good you know it's you need people to to say that shit to you yeah what, what a lot of people don't understand is being outside the box is a completely different thing. Like it's kind of like somebody watching you play paintball and they're on the outside. They see more than you. You know what I mean? They see everything. Where you just see what's in front of you and you just pretty much know what your teammates is calling. But a person that's sitting outside in the stand that can see the whole view, he sees it differently. Yeah. Me, right? So for the past eight years, all I do is watch paintball. I watch every match. If you, it, like, sometimes I get mad at some of the, some of the guys I deal with. Like, how you guys don't have a Ghost, uh, Go, um, Ghost Sports account? 
Like, how do you guys don't have that? How do you guys don't go after your matches, go to the hotel, open your laptop, and go watch some of the matches? Watch some of the best players play. Watch what they do. The same game plan I'm giving you, you can go and see, oh, yeah, boy, look how he's playing it. Look how he's playing it. That's the difference. You think basketball players are not watching other other teams play when they get the chance to? Well, of course they are. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't want to... Some people want to be like, oh, what, what I'm watching those guys for? Like, that mindset is flawed. Right. And that's and a lot of paintball players are like that. They don't. They feel like they're supporting you by watching you. No. Like, you right. guys, your mindset is flawed, you know, because if you want to really know the game, you have to... Bro, I want to. I want to look at your. You, I want to look at your body language and know what move you're gonna make. Yeah, that's true. I'm yeah. That guy that watches, I'm that guy that watches you so much that if your left hand got better, I'm like, oh boy, you been working on your left hand, huh? <laughs> like it's that is that intense because, bro, like oh, I can't play right, so all I do is watch, and like coach some people, you know, help out some people. My little brother, I robbed him out of eight years. My little brother was really coming up. 2014, he had a good year. Joey even told, even Joey even spoke to me about picking him up for damage. Like, yo, he's young, he's fast. You know, I could put him on the D side. We could work with him. Boom! I get in a car accident. His career is done because he, for the eight years, he's taking care of me, right? And if he takes me to events, he can't play because he's pushing me around. He has to deal with me, so. He didn't play paintball. This year, he wanted to play paintball. I got my dad to come out. So I'm helping him get back in the groove. My brother improved in a couple months because he he practices twice a week. Saturday, Sunday, he's at the field. I'm like, Kurt, it's easy to get it back, bro. Like, trust me. The difference between you right now and you back then is your snapshot's not the same. Right. Like some of these guys you play against, they they will shoot the, the 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 strap. They will shoot anything they see on the first shot. That's what you want to do. What's the difference between dynasty and like a uh, uh, a semi pro team? Those guys don't miss. You give anything to Ryan, he's taking it. You give anything to these guys, they're taking it, and it's because they've been there for so long. Sure. I tell people sometimes there's three different there's three there's three different versions of a pro player. There's the player that sees the move, that thought about the move at the end of the match. Like, damn, why well, should have made that move? Then there's the guy that sees the move, thinks about the move, and does it. And there's the player that sees the move and already did it. Do you coach any teams, Jerry? I'm with mutiny right now. Okay, right. My brother plays on mutiny, so okay, right, right, right. So I'm helping them out. We're trying to get back. The first event I didn't coach him, I was just pretty much there with my brother. But the last event I was there helping our coach. They made it a Sunday and they lost a. Um, they made it a Sunday. We lost to Paintball Fit. Yeah. Paint, Paintball Fit is a really good team. Mm-hmm. You cannot take anything from those guys, right? But guess what? Those guys spent a full season in pro getting smashed. That taught them a lot. Mm-hmm. And those kids been together since D four. Yeah, they've got a cool. They've got a cool story also. What does the fit yeah, they, uh, name stand for? Isn't it family intertwined team or something like that, or family? Yes. Something? Yes, his, um, the family owns the field. Yeah, yeah. Field. Verbal probably knows. Uh, yeah, the family. The family owns the field, and three of them are brothers. Mm-hmm. Look at so, the family integrated yeah, team. So with, it's close. so with that, with that, with that mindset, right? And the in the way they play together all the time. It's hard to beat a team like that, you know. And those kids are really disciplined. And mm. once we, once we, once we pull them, I said, okay, this is, if we, we win this, we win the event. If we lose this, you know, it's understandable. Mm. You know, sure. we, we just starting back. Got a bunch of new guys on the team working together. It's looking pretty good. Like I, we, we gonna try to sneak a first place out of this year. Let's go. There you go, dude. I like the mutiny guys, man. They're fun. Yeah, we practiced you guys a lot of those weekends when I was on Ironman. So mm-hmm. we got to talk a lot about the field and, and strategy, which I really enjoyed too. Uh, yeah, picking those, your brain those, on it. Those are good days, and, I, and it's sad. I heard um I heard the field is closing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last yeah, the last cool. weekend is uh, the first Saturday in June, I believe. Yeah. Bummer. That was my last day on Sunday. That was your last day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brett, I, like, 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 California has been the mecca of paintball. Mm-hmm. Forever, 
everybody knows that. Like, if you really want, if you really wanted, to, look at Spinker. Spinker, you got up and left Florida and went and went and went to California, and look at you now, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can really. I mean, there are definitely some places <clears throat> on the map in the U.S. that you can really go to cut your teeth, right? But you need year-round paintball. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest factors, right? Florida, Texas, California, Southern California, yeah. to be exact. And that's what we moved down to Southern California. Yosh and I from Northern California. We 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 graduated high school, went to moved straight to San Diego, just because you know it was either here or so, like uh, L.A. area. Yeah. Thank God we didn't go there, but. <laughs> <clears throat> um, you know, it was like whatever college we got into, that's where we were going to go. And then, obviously, uh, Alex and Oliver followed us the year after because um, they were still in high school. They're younger than us. Far less mature as well. Um, <laughs> man, come on, guys. Come on, man. You guys are 41. <laughs> you guys are 41, man. Still, doing it, man. Like, uh, you know, still those comments. You don't understand, don't understand the arguments that happen. In these chats that I'm in, and, and like, yo, I talk, like, you know, I talk to everybody, you know, because I'm, bro, like, one thing about me, the whole time I've been at paintball, I never, I never screwed anybody over, and I'm friends with everybody, like, I'm super cool with all the guys, and man, we talk about you guys doing what you guys are doing year after year, and it's insane. I had an argument with, with Mouse. Mm-hmm. Probably four years ago, and I was telling him, man, if Oliver comes back, boy, he'll still be that dude. And he swear like I'm crazy. Oh, Oliver's in the woods somewhere. You crazy? <laughs> and when he came back at Cub and did what he did, man, Miles had nothing to say. He apologized. He was like, man, you <laughs> I said, Miles, I've never been wrong in my life. <laughs> No, you're, you're, you're right. That's actually funny. Blake was like, uh, um, <laughs> Blake was like, I want Oliver to come back and play again. Cause he's, I think he's going to be out here for the, uh, he's gonna be out here for Archie's wedding next weekend. And then he's got that one-on-one stuff that he's going to be, he's going to be running with. And, uh, I'm excited for that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Blake's like, Oh yeah. I want Oliver to come practice. I'm just not telling him to play in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of old guys, we wanted to get Alex in here too, I yeah, think. Yeah, Alex is going to join us. Hey, oh, and, and we had a question uh, from someone in here. Oh, what would you do? Nothing. We're good. Um, we had a question from somebody. Do you know what uh, what your hormesis bands were named after? <laughs> Strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> what up, Alex? We're talking about the, uh, his hormesis bands. I'm out here, baby. Yeah, man, my, hey, I'm not gonna lie, my bands, my bands, I, I, I have, it's a funny story, I had a friend, because Alex gave me the code early, right, so I had a friend I gave the code to, and he was excited, he really wanted a headband, I gave him the code, and he said he went in, and it's his first time on the site, so he didn't have an account set up, so he puts in the code, he puts in his headband, and he goes to do an account, it, it didn't take him over, it didn't take him two minutes and, the, and it was sold out. I was like, yeah, bro, like, it's sold out in under it. He didn't under. get one? Did he ever get one? Nah. I might have one back there. <laughs> nah, he, he, I, well, no, no, he didn't get one on the side. I ended up getting I know one. I have one because I kept one for myself. Nah, I ended up, I ended up giving him one, but he wanted to order it. But yo, he said, bro, like, it didn't even, like, I didn't even take two minutes to, to, to sign up and it sold out. Nice. Well, like my headband's really sold, and it just shows you know how much the community like really loves, you know, like like still still loves me, you know, still want to be a part, and and I love the fact that I'm a part of this community. Like, man, paintball players, man, like you guys are actually the best, you know. Well, you know, I, I mean, I don't know how many people out there know your story. Uh, I don't know if you told it on here or not, but I, I think it's it's 
it's worth telling because it's a true story of perseverance. And I, I remember seeing you for the first time after your accident and I like, I, I couldn't hold it together. And, um, you know, just your reaction to that um, just speaks to the type of person you are extremely, extremely strong and, um, you know, able to um, be a realist about about life and, and, and accept uh, the way things are and make the best out of them, which man, you know, I don't think uh, people, people cannot relate to that, right? Like you could run through it in your head, but until someone's been in a situation like you, you don't know. Um, nah, you're, so, you're absolutely right. I, I didn't really tell the story, but I think it'll be a good story to tell. So, so it, it was pretty crazy, right? So we all know damage, damage was supposed to break up around that time. And I got the phone call. I got the phone call from from Jason, and they were like, "Yo, you know, like we want to keep the team together." And I was I was with I was working for Matt Depp at the time, so I called Matt Depp, gave them a gave them a really good um, gun deal. So we worked with we worked with Virtue to get them the gun deal. My biggest thing of playing pro was playing pro NXL actually was because I was with Matt Depp. And I had my sponsorship, so I couldn't shoot any other gun. And the only team that was using that gun at the time was the Russians. And I just never really wanted to play for the Russians, kind of. So I never really tried. But I was okay with it. So when when Damage jumped on, it was a perfect opportunity for me to actually go, yeah, I'm going to be able to use my gun. Everything's great. Because even when I played on Legend and MPPL, I was able to use a Mac Dev gun while everybody else used axes. Which you guys rocks, by the way. I mean, I don't know how many people understand the uh, history of that that team, but, um, you know, you definitely made your mark. And with, um, you know, a bunch of nobodies at the time were up there, uh, you know, trading blows with the big dogs. Nah, for sure. We gave y'all problems, too. <laughs> yeah, you, had, you, had, you were always back there in that, in that corner. And then, you know, you, you and Damien. You know, nah, um, me, you me know, just causing problems. We, we won a lot of two on fives. Yeah. Two on <laughs> it, 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 but you know, it is what it is. Like you just gotta, yo, know, you can't, you can't count. You can't. There's certain people in Tampa you can't count out. Mm-hmm. It don't matter what the hey, boy, five on three. But there's a the guy over there that can shoot three people. And I remember our team meetings back then. After you guys got us once or twice. <laughs> We're like, all right, like, slow down on, on Jerry and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and then we're, like, calling you out when, you know, we, we had, like, a call, like, if you died or he died, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, all right. So, like, a <laughs> Lafoya like type of deal. Joey, like, yeah, there you go. We had a game when we played we played against Damage. Joey told all his team, don't even shoot at Jerry. Like, he's, he's going to go to the corner. Let's wait. Let's put our guns somewhere else. <laughs> You're not even going to shoot him. Yeah. Like, but, but, you know, for Joey to tell his actual team that, told me that yeah we're not gonna shoot you you run a gun to the corner with 13 pods and you haven't died once this whole event <laughs> you know so it, it was so those days was like they were really good days and damn i missed those days but so so the opportunity got for me to play for damage it was great we went out you know they had a tryout but of course i didn't i didn't need a tryout but i still went out there played tryout and of course i killed it you know like we had a great tryout <laughs> We jail like imagine being a person that never like always been the best person on the team, and for you to jump on a team where you probably got three or four people better than you. Just imagine that, right? In my mindset, well, I mean, I usually gotta shoot two, three, four guys to win. Like my whole career, like, I've been, I've been on, it's been like that for me. And now for me to be on a team where I, well, I could just shoot one and it's okay. But I, I'm gonna go get two, three, you know. And I was playing the snake in front of, and, and I was playing the, uh, the snake in front of Brian. Man, I felt so good. Like I really felt like I was gonna have a crazy, crazy year that year. And we had the first practice. Everything was good. I went home, and then Jason called me. We're like, "Yo, we're practicing this Saturday. You want to come up?" I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. So I drove up by myself. The first weekend I drove up with Art. It was me and Art. We drove up. We got a hotel. It was a two day. But this weekend I drove up by myself. It was right before Valentine's. So I drove up. We went practice. Practice was really good again. And I left practice. And I was with a friend because I had a friend that came also. And we went to Chick 
Chick-fil-A, we ate, came out, my, my tire was flat. He was like, yo, you got a flat tire. I looked, the tire was flat, drove to, drove to a gas station, aired up the tire, he left, I went to, I went to a tire shop, got the tire fixed. They told me the tire fixed, paid 40 bucks. I went to see my friends, the Pouncey Twins, football players, one played for uh, Miami, the other one plays for um, Pittsburgh. They retired now, but it was, it was his daughter's birthday, so I went to their house in Lakeland, which was like 40 minutes from the paintball field. So I'm at the house, I get there, park the car in the front, we hang out, we eat. I wake up in the morning, we, we're going to the gym, because these boys, yo, they never miss a gym. <laughs> and they, they kind of taught me, like, I thought I went hard, but, but watching them, they really taught me what going hard is. Like, they never miss. They really, like, boy, we go to gym early in the morning, and we try to sink a gym in in the afternoon also. Like, this is our money, like, you know, so they kind of, their mindset, of course, they get paid a lot of money, right? Like, when you got $50 million contracts, like, yo, this is all you do. Well, in paintball, you know, we got to do other jobs to make money. So it's understandable. But that still taught me, like, you still got to put in whatever you can in the paintball also because you got to work on your craft. So we go out to the gym. I step outside. I seen the, t- the same tire was flat again. So I'm like, damn, with a tire flat, I just got it fixed. So we went, aired the tire up, we went to the gym. I said, I'll fix it later. So later on, before we went to the party, I jumped in my car. I went to the tire's bus, getting the tire fixed. Guy went, looked at the tire, took it out, boom, boom, boom. He said he fixed it. Whatever was wrong with it, he said he fixed it. My, It's, it's like a three and a half hour drive, so I'm driving home. Probably like two hours in the drive, man. And I'm, as I'm driving, I heard something in the tire, and I felt the car shifting. So I went. I was on Highway 27, which is pretty much a two lane road on both sides, and in the in the middle is just grass, it's like you know, uneven grass and stuff. And as soon as the tire blew, the car skidded sideways and went into the median. And the first hit, the tire flipped right. So the car's flipping, and I go, it, it's crazy that I, what I'm saying is, well, I'm getting goosebumps right now, because every time I try to, I think back and tell the story, I could see me in the car. It happened in slow motion. Like on the first flip, bro, I was slick. I was so slick, right? As soon as the car flipped, I started praying to God, right? So I asked God to forgive me for my sin, because I heard you know, if you, you know, God forgive me, you're you're going to heaven. So I try to finesse my way to heaven. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I try to finesse my way to heaven quick. Why has God forgive me for my sin? On the first flip. And on the second flip, man, I started thinking about my family. So now I started, now I started to ask God, please don't let me die. I don't want to leave my son behind. And I don't, you know, you know I'm thinking about my family. And on the third flip, the window busted. My head came outside the car. My face touched the dirt, and the car rolled over my head. Like, I'm telling you this because it was on a slow motion. And on that third flip, when the car rolled over my head, the car stopped. And instantly, I didn't feel my I didn't feel my lower body, right? So, I'm like, yo, why am I hovering? So, in my head, I feel like I'm hovering, but my head is still straight. But I can move my hands, and I'm looking around. I can't find my phone, and I'm 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 just in the middle, and I'm watching cars go up and down, up and down, up and down. No car is stopping, so I'm just in the car, and I can't really move. The door is jammed. I can't get out, and I'm hovering, and um, and like now, I can't hold my neck up no more, right? So my neck, my neck is broken, but it's still holding on. So now that I can't hold my neck up no more, my neck starts going back. So as my head goes back, now I can't, every time my head goes back, I can't feel my arms. That's when the real paralysis start hitting. So I'm trying to hold my head up, but I can't because my neck is broken at this time. But I don't really know, you know, like, I don't really know how. I, I don't know what's going on. Bro, I 
I'm in the car, man. Man, hours is going by, and you can still see cars going up and down, and no one is stopping. And when I felt like I was ready to go, right? Because I'm like, man, if I close my eyes and I go to sleep, I'm, I'm not waking up. I could feel it, but I could feel it just drain. I could feel my body just being drained. And this car stops, right? And this guy runs up, and I start screaming for help. And he comes in, and the first thing I asked him, Yo, do, you, do you have any water? <laughs> Y'all was so thirsty. And, um, and the guy was like, nah, I got some ice. So the guy ran in, and he's putting ice in my mouth. And um, and the guy starts crying, right? So I gave him my phone, my, my mom's number, and he calls my mom. And he told her, but he already called. Come to find out, 45 minutes away, Somebody had somebody that seen an accident called and said there was an accident. The people was like 30 minutes away looking for me, looking for the accident. Cause the guy never stopped. The guy just called. So as soon as he called and said, yo, this way you at, they was able to come quick because they already heard there was an accident hours ago. And the reason the guy cried, right, is because the guy drove by and saw the car. And he was driving with his mom, and he seen the car, and he was like, yo, why is there just a random car just in the middle of the highway? And it's dark. Like, usually in his accidents, you know, somebody, but they take the car away. So the guy kept driving. Like, two miles down the road, something kept telling him to go back. He made an illegal U-turn on the highway. Like, you know, the way the cops do it. He made an illegal U-turn, came back to see the car. And when he and when he heard me, he saw me in the car. He cried because he felt like he would have left me to die. Something made him come back. Like, bro, if you don't believe in God, but I like that really showed me, like, bro, like God made that guy come back. Cause who in their right mind at night on a highway that's super dark, when you already left, turns back around? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I would have done that. It's too weird. It's too weird, right? Like, just, just a scenario of you just seeing a random car in the middle, broken down car in the middle of a highway at this time, and no one stopped. Well, it's, it's, his intuition told him something wasn't right, and, mm-hmm. and that, you know, what is that What is that intuition? Is it is it his, like, is it his guiding light? Is it your guardian angel? Is it, you know, it's inexplicable. It's, it's, it's unexplainable, and right? So, so, I mean... You know, we've all had, right? It's just like, be honest with yourself, which is what my dad always told me, right? And it, 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 I mean, for me, and it's Shakespeare, right? To thine own self be true. And and it's when you're going through your life and you realize the truth of what you see, then, you know, you can make an every day. I mean, gosh, I mean, all, all four of us can go back and look at moments and say, hey, if I wanted on this instead of that, then, you know, my life would be totally different. And something inside me told me to do that, but I didn't listen. Nah, for sure, for sure. And when he told, when he said that, I'm like, bro, because I just, I just told myself that I can't hold on no more, and I was just about to let go. If I close my eyes, go to sleep, it's it's over. You know what I'm saying? It's a wrap. And it happened quick, man. They came, they cut the car. And they took me out of there, and I was like, oh, I don't feel my, I can't feel my legs, I can't feel my legs. And they take me there, they put me in a chopper, I get there, and the whole time I'm just crying, like, yo, I can't feel my legs. And I'm telling my mom, my mom was there, my cousin was there, and I'm telling her I can't feel my legs. And I wake up like three days later, and I can't even, like, I can't move, I had nothing, man. Not even hands. Fingers, nothing, nothing worked. The, the the doctor told my mom, I have a 2% chance of gaining. My He told my mom, I'm only going to have shoulders and, um, and, and biceps. Because, yo, my, my, my spinal cord was pretty much cut, hanging by a thread. And, bruh, when you wake up, in a hospital room where you can't feel your legs, you can't move your arms, you can't, you have no hands, 
and then you're thinking, yo, I got three trips lined up. Like, bro, this is February. I'm going to... I already spoke to Kevin Wong. I'm going to Bangkok, first event. I have Dallas coming up, first MP, uh, first PSP. I'm going to the first... I'm going to the first... um the first European event, that's three trips. That's all in, that's all in March. Bro, it's, I got like two weeks to get, to get better. And that's, and, and bro, like, imagine, that's my mindset, right? Like, bro, am I going to be, am I going to be able to get out of here to make these events? Not knowing, yo, what's really going on with me. You know, because everybody kind of kept, you know, they wanted to keep it a secret. They didn't really want to tell me how bad it was, what's going on, you know. And then everybody that comes in is crying, and I'm cracking jokes. Because I've always been that guy. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never want to be that negative guy in the room, you know. Like, I don't want people crying over what I'm going through. So, now, you're in a hospital, and I'm, I'm talking about 50, 60 people coming to see me at once. So these people are like, yo, who are these people? Like, who is this guy? And then you got celebrities pulling up, football players, you know, like. So they, they had me in a special ward by myself. People are not allowed to be there, but I, I, I was able to have people there. Like, they really treated me like a celebrity. They gave me, I had two therapists. Like, bro, I'm not a, yo, what you got me on suicide watch? Like, I don't need no therapist, you know what I mean? Like, but Jerry, we understand, like, who you are, like, what you, like, how do you go from being a person that's flying 100, 200, 100, 150,000 miles, that's traveling all these countries, Europe, Europe, Africa, I'm talking about that year, that, that year, 2014, I think I went to New Zealand, Africa, I went to Asia two, three times, I went to all the Europe events. You know, come on, like, you know, how do you go from being that guy that jumps on a plane and you're at a different country every other week to now being a vegetable? Because at the time, I had nothing, right? So how do you keep yourself positive, you know? It's, it's, it's really mind over everything because it's all about the, it's all about the mindset of, Knowing, like, yo, you were just on top of the world. And I'm the breadwinner of my family. Because it's me, my mom, my brother, and my sister, right? My dad, my dad's in North Carolina at the time, or New York, wherever he was. Yeah, but I was the breadwinner. I'm the one that kept the family together. I didn't have to go to work so we could be able to whatever. Because my, my brother and sister was in high school. So I'm the one providing for the family. And now I'm in this, and now I'm in this hospital room, and I'm having nightmares because every time I close my eyes, I see the accident. I'm reliving the same. I'm reliving that pain of the car rolling over my head, right, Joe? And it was, and it was for a long time where I, every time I close my eyes, I see the same. And you know what I tell people? How many times you jump in your car and go to practice? You know. That really shows you, bro, life is so short, it could really happen to anybody. You could do any, you could do, you could have, you could do anything to really try to prevent it, but you can't. My tires are Michelin tires. Those tires was like four months old. Michelin, the best tires. I'm paying $200 a tire. I want the best tires. My tire, my tire wasn't working. I took it to the shop, got it fixed. It still didn't work. I took it to another shop, got it fixed. I did my part, right? I did everything I could to drive home safe. I'm not speeding. I wasn't sleepy. Not, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, yeah, just after practice, you're tired, you're driving home. You sleep. No, I went home. I went, had a party, hung out with the guys. It's 6, 7 p.m. I'm driving home. So there's no excuse on that part. So if it could happen to me, like, bro, like, I tell my friends, I tell people all the time, like, yo, every day you jump in your car, you go to work, and you get to come back home, it's a blessing. Anytime you wake up, it's a blessing. I tell, I tell 
tell people, you want to know what my wish is? Like, like, my wish is so simple. I wish I could get up, get out of bed on my own, and brush my teeth. That is stuff we take for granted because I can't do that on my own. I need my brother or my sister to help me. That's insane, right? You see what my wish is now? To being able to get up and get out, get out of bed and brush my teeth on my own. Which is something we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm able to get up and get out there, what's anybody else's excuse? And, I mean, first if, off, sorry, go ahead. If I'm at the paintball field, what's your excuse for not being out there? Yeah. Well said. <clears throat> I mean, thank thank you for number one sharing that. And Seriously, obviously that's heavy duty shit. It doesn't get heavier than that. Um, and uh, and and I think that I mean, for me personally, and I hope for the people watching also, there's tremendous value in that entire story. And I, yeah. I mean, obviously plan back to go back and look at and, and understand the nuance of, of the things you're saying there, um, and, and the way that you process those moments. And and currently, and I, and I will say, I mean. From the first time I saw you after this happened, and every time after that, you've always been very direct and and very proactive in your in your state of being, mm -hmm. and 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 it, it's nothing that you say, even though you do say things that you know promote those ideas, but it's how you are, and it's it's difficult to explain that, and and it's it's almost like. You know, it's an aura and a presence. And honestly, shout out to your brother and your sister and your family and people that have helped you through this because without that support system, I know, you know, and, and anyone out there who's helping, you know, an elderly parent or a family member or somebody disabled or any, you know, it, it, that is such a challenging, a challenging but rewarding uh, a, a practice. And there's tremendous honor in that spiritually, I believe. So, you know, I, I feel like, there's a very interesting dynamic that's probably happening in your family where it's, you know, extremely difficult, but it, you know, you're bound now in, in a very, um, in, in a way that, you know, people that don't have that experience will ever understand. Um, and yeah, man, I just, when I see you and I will say this, I, I, I really, if there's one person that I get upset that when they're not rooting for us, it's you. I can't <laughs> about more people. But when I see, when I saw you over there with the, with the, uh, with the, with the Latin saints, I was like, oh, the fire. Like, God damn it. You know, like Jerry, like if Jerry ain't with us, I'm like, this, we must be doing something wrong. Um, but, uh, but I will say, uh, yeah, man, I mean, you're an inspiration to me and, uh, and and I love you. I, I um I, I do really uh, I appreciate all of that, um you know and 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 being forthcoming with that and and helping people to understand what you know I mean what life is what it's about I mean you've it, it was almost taken away from you and you know certain parts of it huge parts of it were so um yeah I mean you've yeah I I I don't I don't know what else to say but you know you're. You know what it is? It's kind of, it's more of a, it's more of a, I, I know a lot, I hear a lot of people talk about mental health, which I, which I understand, and it's, right, this is something that I really have a hard time with, right? Suicide, right? You know, we all know, you know, somebody in paintball just, you know, it's sad that that just happened, right? But, I kind of understand it. And at the same time, with me, don't, the reason why I've, I've been able to hold out so strong is because if I were to really do something like that, it would, it would hurt so much people more than it'll hurt me. I'm not, not only my family members, man, so many people in paintball, so many people out there would be hurt. And that, and that, and that always, that's always in my mind, where I got so many people out there that believes in me, and I motivate so much people, like I would not want to let them down, even now, like no matter how much I'm struggling and I'm suffering, I would make more people suffer if I were to do that, and that mindset is the reason why I'm still here, 
Because, bro, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Throughout the eight years, bro, it's been rough. There's more, there's, there's more, there's more rough moments than there is good. But, bro, you got to take every good, like, you, you got to take every good that, that comes out. You got to run with it. When you waking up is a blessing. Because a lot of people don't wake up. Like, we don't understand how, yo, we only really have 80, like, you know, 80, 100 years here. Most of us will never get to that. So we have to live in this moment, bro. Like, bro, you guys are 40 years old and y'all killing it. Y'all, yo, yo, you guys are living the dream that I had when I was. 17, 18, and you guys are still doing it at the highest level. Bro, I, when I go out to paintball, I root for damage, and if damage loses, I'm, I'm, everybody know DYNS. <laughs> and Miles, Miles jokes, Miles jokes, everybody cracks jokes. Oh, yeah, you gonna, oh, yeah, let me guess, you gonna be a dynasty pit? Like, yeah, I'm gonna be right with the boys, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! Like, you, like I don't care. I know we all competitors, but bro, come on, man! You see what them boys are doing out there, bro? You gotta give it to them. You know, I, uh, I was, I remember a practice a few years ago. We were practicing uh, Impact, and this is when Impact is on that like super high, right? Like they're on a fucking run, and they're kind of rewriting like the way that their philosophy about like the modern style paintball is played now that a lot of teams understand. And we're out there, and, um, and, uh, man, maybe this is a, this thing's right after I got married. I don't know. Either, either way, I, we're out there, and I make some dumb move at practice, and, like, Mouse shoots the shit out of me. And he looked at me, like, after the point, he looked over at me and grinned, and he, he looked at me like, you're fucking done. Like, he, there was no, there's no, you know, I, I knew what he was thinking, right? Like, yeah. like, he, he yeah, had, he had his foot on my neck. And was like, you're fucking, you're, you're over, right? And, and I knew, and, and you know, they're coming from that place, right? You felt that. I did, for sure. Yeah, and, um, and uh, you know, I, I really took a hard look, not only after that, but there, there's a lot of things, right? There's a moment that Ryan, you were with me, and we got our ass kicked at some tournament, and Mike Bruno walked over to me, Yosh, and Ryan, and got us together, and he looked at us, and he says, I don't want, ever want to see you do that shit again. Because he knew that our heart wasn't in it. And he knew that we weren't putting it out, right? And this all comes back to why the fuck are we out there, right? And don't take it for granted. So when you go out there, you take every moment and you you harness it and, and you give it what it deserves. And that's the best you can do, right? And from your story, right? And don't take it for granted because, you know, go on. <laughs> just like that, bro. Just like that. Well, and then and then on top of that, you know, like, man, how people deal with loss in in any spectrum, right, is important, right? You got to find a silver lining. You have to. It can't be defeat mentally, mentally, physically, and emotionally every single time. There's got to be a silver lining, whatever it might be, Jerry. And and I mean, I think you 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 could probably let us in on that too, but. You know, every loss comes with a, a lesson. Every mistake, every every success comes with a lesson, right? And there's always something there that can make just a little bit of the clouds sp- spread, you know, to see something bright at the end of the road. And it's hard to find it. It's like you must have had to dig deep uh, for every single day even, you know, to find out what that is. But you know, your love for the community and the paintball industry. And like you said, you know, even if it's, I don't want to let anybody else down. Right. You know, you know what it is. It, it's more of a, like with me, like I stopped living my life for me a long time ago. Like I live my life more now for my family, you know, my friends, my, my, my kid. Like I'm just here just going with the flow kind of, you know, just fighting through it because I know it's a long journey, but like, like, yo, you just gotta suck it up and get it done. Like, like, like no one is gonna fight for you. You gotta be the one to fight for yourself. Like, nothing is ever given. Like, anything, any, anything that you ever get, you have to work hard for it. 
Like, you think anybody's gonna be like, oh man, like, I feel sorry for you, I'm just gonna give you. No! Like you said, people love to have their feet on your neck, bro. Right? And when you look, when you when you think like that, and you look at like that, you're like, what do I need to do to get out of this slump? Do I need to do I need to go to do I need to add an extra two hours in my practice? Do I need to stay longer? Do I need to work on my left hand? Do I need to whatever you need to do, you need to actually do it, and that's and unless you have that drive in you, I don't know if anybody could really help you because I I'm sorry, but. No matter what I do, I can't help you. You gotta help yourself. Yeah. And I understood that a long time ago. And and the, my position is more of a bro. I'm just out here like giving everything that I can back. Like bro, like if you if anybody ever needs help, if you ever feeling down, call me. Mm-hmm. And like when 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 Bobby passed. Bobby called me a week before that, and he called me like at 6 a.m. my time, which is 3 a.m. his time. But I was asleep, you know, I woke up and I seen the call, and I'm like, oh, I'll just call him later. And I didn't get a chance to call him later. And when he passed, you know, that shit hurt me. Because, like, wh- why did he call me at 3 in the morning? Like, what did he want to say? What did he want to talk about? You know what I'm saying? What was he going through? And that hurt me because I didn't I missed that call. Yeah, six AM I'm asleep. Three at three AM his time, you know. But when I woke up, why didn't I call? You know what I'm saying? And I and I feel bad. And I promised myself ever since then that bruh, I'm gonna try to never miss a call. If I miss a call, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna call you back. Because nowadays, man, like that phone call is easy to make. If you ever feel in some type of way, man, make a phone call to a friend. Make a phone call to somebody. Because you really don't know what somebody's going through. Like, you never really know. You, you never know. A smile, you can see a smile on their face, but you don't know the struggle at night. I'm struggling, but every time you guys see me, I'm cracking up. You know, I got a smile on my face. Because I'm just happy to be out there. Yo, when, when, I, when I showed up at the last event... I knew it was going to be rough. I got dragged across that whole paintball. Like, I got dragged the whole time because you see how muddy and soft that that dirt, that um, that, that um grass was? You weren't able to push me. Every time they pushed me, I got stuck. My dad dragged me around to every paintball, to every um, paintball field we played on, and I still had a great time because I want to be out there. I want to see the guys play. I want to get a chance to hang out with the guys. I love paintball that much that I'm willing to go out there and fight it out of struggle. So that's why I tell other people, bro, what's your excuse? Yeah. Jerry, well, I mean, we, we need yeah, to get you. I mean, it, it's true. It's really true love. I mean, at least from going back to you saying like, look, you're, you're, you're sticking around here, not for yourself. And, um, that, that is an act of, um, you know, of sacrifice and and love for for the people around you and i I mean for me personally you know my uh the illumination that you've brought to me is um i mean not rivaled by many things that i've heard or experienced in life and it, it is a driving it is a driving force to you know when i get my ass out of bed to do my best right when it when it is close to home it's it's different Mm-hmm. Because yeah, like before my accident, I've never really known anybody in a wheelchair, so I don't really understand. I never understood what being in a wheelchair even means, you know. Like I've never had a friend that was handicapped, but now that it happened to me, a fellow paintball player, a guy that you you played against, a guy that you know you fought against, you see me in this situation, you're like, damn, well that could be me. So it, when it gets close to home like that. It hits different, you know. Now you kind of you seen it firsthand. Like we were just together last week, shooting each other up, and boom, like you know, oh man, look, look at Jerry, but Jerry's still here. Like yo, you can't, y'all, y'all can't keep me away. No matter what Tom Cole does, I'm still pulling up. <laughs> <laughs> we need. <laughs> no matter how muddy he makes these events, it is, yeah. it's his fault. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. With the mud? Yeah, they had to ride me around in a, in, in a little truck. Hey, we need to get you a 4x4 four four wheelchair. One of those ones with the big-ass wheels. That's what we need. Yeah, them you need. Like, them things 15000 <laughs> Trust me, I looked into it. <laughs> Yeah, well, how many do you still have? Thirteen jet skis? <laughs> you know, the thing was supposed to. Hk actually was supposed to do a um a run for Jerry. I don't know if they're still doing it. Marky did message me, and he was supposed to do something like that to try to get together and get me something like that. But you know, with COVID, nothing ever really happened. So. We'll we'll uh we'll throw together a, a spick and span uh our next donation. We usually do one quarterly, and we'll we'll find a way to. I know Marky and Brandon well, shorter well, about the round of fifty miler. Hey, hey, you know what? Like Catalina. I said, man, you know. Around Kelly. Like with me, it doesn't even matter because I want to be out there so bad, so I can see the mud, I see the rain, and that don't stop my drive. You know what I'm saying? Like. I could stay in the hotel room, right? I could stay in the hotel room and watch it on the webcast. But nah, man, I want to be in the mud with you guys. You know, you guys mm-hmm. are in that mud. I want to be in that mud too, you know? Just because I can't play, but I want to I wanna, I wanna help the guys. Like, my biggest thing, and when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I was with the Saints, my biggest thing was I'm good with players. Like, no matter how good you are at paintball, you can still come off and get some good advice. Mm-hmm. Especially from a guy that's sitting outside watching. So when you come off the field and I'm like, yeah, boy, you could have done this, this, and that. You're like, damn, boy, you're right. And that's what I'm big on because, bro, like the coaching, like, bro, I've done this for a long time, bro. I started in 99. And all these years, I've just been playing paintball. And for the past eight years, all I've been doing is watching paintball. I watch every game. I mean, you have a you have a um, you know a, a, a really cerebral and high level understanding of what's happening in paintball. Like, and you were that way when you were playing too. But mm-hmm. now, I mean, I've had I've had brief conversations with you at tournaments where you're you know breaking down and making complex thoughts and situations very simple, right? Like, you know, you can yeah. spot okay, this is what's going wrong for this team, and you can you can pick that out. Oh, oh and, yeah, and, like and I'm, that, I'm, yeah, I'm that, so big. I'm so big on that because it's more of a I not only know pretty much all the players, but you gotta remember, like I said, bro, like I go I go back and I watch every I, I go to Ghost Sports and I could sit there and watch eight hours of Ghost Sports. How many people is doing that? You know, we like well, you guys got jobs, <laughs> you guys got kids, you guys got stuff to deal with. No one wants to do that, right? But a person like me who's in a chair who has nothing going for him. Bro, I watch eight hours of paintball, watch everybody play, listen to everything, watch everything. So it's easy for me to look at a team and be like, oh, yeah, but this is going to be your problem. This is your problem. Oh, with this layout, yeah, this guy's good here. This guy won't be good there. It's easy for me to figure that out. And then I know if the guy, I could see guys who's putting in the work and guys who's not putting in the work. So that's what I want to do. That's why I still come around. That's what I'm giving the paintball. I'm helping the. Like, I feel like if we don't give back to these kids, who who's gonna who's gonna take you you guys spot? Like, there's no reason why you guys are still winning. Come and take it. <laughs> there's no reason why you guys are still. Winning. I've been waiting. Yeah, man. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. You guys are, bro, that's why I'm rooting for you guys because yo, Kyle knows. <laughs> I stand out there. I stand out there when the sun's going down, wearing my gear, asking for somebody to play me. Hey, yeah. you, need to stand up. you need your gun to help you stand yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Bro, like, yeah, Marcelo's in the ice bath. I, I keep saying it. I'm like, bro, we have to give back because these kids will never be able to beat. Like, you guys probably still got another six, seven years left, bro. The way y'all looking. <laughs> Who's gonna, who's gonna stop you guys? Don't, yeah, Alex's wife is gonna stop him. <laughs> <laughs> you can try. You can try. I'm that's sorry. Did somebody good. say 15 and, and, years? <laughs> and, and that's exactly why I'm so. That's that's exactly why I'm so happy to see you guys still doing it because, bro, you guys are doing what I've been saying way back. Like no one believed in me. I'm like, bro, like I didn't see still gonna be a problem. Like those guys still won't. This guy still can't be stopped. They can't be stopped, bro. Yo, the fact that you stuck, the fact that you went and you did that crawl into that snake and took out and took out Chad. Like, bro, I didn't expect you to go in like that, bro. Like you still <laughs> When I saw you crawling, I'm like, how did they not 
bunker down before they bunker me, dog. Bro, there's no reason why you uh, like. Like I'm watching this. I'm like, Dynasty won. <laughs> I said, I said, they put Addison the snake. Addison's calling like I knew it right then and there. Like, like it's just man, it, it's, it's incredible, man. Watching you guys do this over and over and over and over again. When the eye, when when the eyes are stalking guys. It's incredible, man. You got story. You got story outweighs my story. My story ain't nothing compared to me. Shut up, dude. Huh? My story we're, playing a, we're playing a child's game, you know? I mean, I, I will say that, 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 you know, the way you hold, the, the regard that you hold us in is, is amazing. But, and the bottom line, the bottom line is, is, you know, we're all, we're all people out here trying to make our way and we're lucky enough to have each other right and that's the real thing that you know yeah i want to win the tournament i want to do my best out there i want to bond with my teammates and all that stuff but like really like what i've noticed for me uh transformation and uh a gratitude of just being able to be there and 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 getting on the plane on sunday night going or on on monday morning whenever it is going you know i had a good time and um and Hopefully, you know, the people around me did too. And, and you know, Jerry, you're, you're certainly part and a, a very important part of the fabric of what we're doing. And, um, and you know, obviously, I always look to make sure you're there at the tournament um, because it's, it's one of those things that, you know, is important to, to a lot of people. Um, and I think you know that. I mean, you know you've had a, 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 a heavy positive impact on, on um, you know, what we're doing here. And, you know, I know what happened to you, what did you say, eight, was it eight years ago? Yep, eight years. Man. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got to, you know, even though I have no way to qualify or understand what you've gone through, I, I, I do want to say thank you for, for being here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, man, I mean, uh, I, I know things got heavy, but I, I think it, it was extremely, extremely valuable. And I, I do I do thank you for, for sharing that because, honestly, I had never really heard – um, the whole story in that detail and also sharing your feelings and the way that, you know, you were processing thing and things in those moments and, and, um, man, uh, heavy duty. And, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't, uh, can't thank you enough. And, you know, not for sure, man. Like, <clears throat> bro, we all we got, man, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta, people gotta think about this is community. Like, you know, you guys would not be where you guys are at without us. And we're here for you guys, you know, at the same time, you know, like, we, we got to understand that the Paymont community is a great community. Like, we support each other and we're there for each other, you know, because at the end of the day, if we don't keep this going, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if we need this platform, like, one, one thing is, like, I've always been, a, like, I, I get mad. When people kind of like talk bad about Bond and talk bad about like you know Cole, Tom, and like these guys, because I'm like, yo, the only reason you guys have a, the only reason you guys are arguing and fighting, and you guys, they give you that platform, because without them, you wouldn't have a platform to bitch about. And that's Listen, it's easy. There's an easy solution. Whenever you're gonna talk shit about one of those guys, just talk shit about Ryan instead. It's easy. That's what I do. I'm like, you know, fucking Bart, why do you do this? And then I just redirect it, chant, send it right toward Ryan, mm-hmm. and, and we're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I blow up my team, right. and, you know, yeah. pulls off his back like a duck. I'm like, man, you know. <laughs> just piles on my shoulders like uh, Atlas. Yeah, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we really got to sit back and think, you know, when MPPL was first, when MPPL first was going downhill, Bart came in and saved it. And gave us those couple years. Same thing with NXL, you know, PSP was going out of business. You know, these guys came in and put in the money and gave us this platform. And it's a great platform, man. Like, I love being able to buy my plane ticket and fly to these events. You know, so it's, for me, this is a place, this is a place of healing for me. Like, you know, when I'm at paintball, all the worries that I have all the pain that I have goes away. Everything when 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 the tournament's coming up and I'm like, oh boy, I gotta I gotta go up to CFP for the practice before the tournament. Oh yeah, I got a tournament coming up. Curve, we gotta get everything ready for the tournament. Oh yeah, 
we gotta get a rental car. Make sure the re- make sure my rental car, my wheelchair could fit in there. Oh, make sure I could be able to transfer. The seat goes up and down. These are all the little things, but I'm so happy to deal with them. Damn, well, I hope this ain't a little plane, because you know how every time we have those little planes, what I go through. You know, because th- the process of me, I got to get there super early. I got to have somebody transfer me to a little owl chair. So I transfer from my wheelchair to a little owl chair. Hopefully, they don't drop me, because they have dropped me a couple times before out of the owl chair. Then they got to take the owl chair, run me in the airplane before everybody, go through, boom, boom, boom. Then I got to transfer from the owl chair to the actual chair. Hopefully the, the seat of the chair goes up because if it doesn't go up, they're going to have to pick me up and put me over it. And yeah, it's such a process that most people wouldn't want to do. And I'm happy to do it because I want to go to paint mall. I want to see you guys. I want to see all my friends. I want to hang out and crack jokes. You know? I want to leave the field muddy, dirty, with paint all over me. So it's it's... It's more of, if we want something, we're going to sacrifice and do everything to do it. So, and so guys, the people that are playing paintball, you don't know how long you have in this sport. Give it all you have right now. Give the extra two hours in. Trust me, if you put in the work, people will see it. I could tell, when somebody gets better, I instantly could tell. When I'm watching you, I'm telling you, if your if your left hand got better, I could tell you. Oh, boy, well, he been working on his left hand. I could tell when I started playing, my, I didn't have a left hand. By the end of my career, my left hand was better than my right because I practiced this so much. These things are easy, guys. Like this is easy. <clears throat> this sport is one of the easiest sports because you don't have to be super fast. You don't have to be slim. Like, look at that dude, man. Freaking, oh, what's his name? Is it Colt? Colt. Yeah, yeah Colt. Yeah. Colt McCown. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Yo, he survived by his gun, bro. He's mm-hmm. an inspiration. Anybody that, any, yo, if you if you think you're a paintball player and you're not putting in the work he's putting in, come on, man, look at mm-hmm. him, bro. He's an inspiration. When I watch him play, I could tell. Yo, he don't lose gun battles because he has to survive. If he goes in, he's dead. He's not going in, but you can tell he's putting in the work. I want to play that, dude. I want to feel. I want to feel what what, what it's like. <laughs> right. <Bruh. laughs> like, tri- hey, you will, you will have a chance. Guess what? Because because best believe next year he's gonna be in um he's gonna be in the pro season. Like man, the work they putting in and the effort they giving. Yeah, they have, okay. Some people could say they do have it. A, they do have it a little easier because they have a field. They do it all the time. I heard they practice four times a week. But that's not stopping you. Yeah, they're young too. They're a young group of guys. Yeah, that's not stopping all these young cats. But they're like, yo, if you want it, bro, you can get it. And it took me. It took me like three years. I started. I started playing in two thousand. In two thousand two, I played my first event. In two thousand six, I won my first event. Texas, 06 Texas, 35 degrees. Y'all remember that? Yeah. 35 degrees on yeah, Sunday. I remember that one. And, and, and snowing. That was the first tournament Oliver was with Ironman. And I didn't give a crap how we did. I was like, I just want Oliver to lose. I was like, us. Uh, and he was like, you know, <laughs> he, had like, he had like all the old Aftershock guys. And you know, I think they got their ass kicked too. But I was like, yeah, see, I told you. <laughs> yeah, that was my first. That's the first event I won. We had a great season. We won that. Se- we won that series. 07, It was the open. It was uh, that's when PSC went to open, mm-hmm. and we played against Impact. We played against a lot of good teams. We got smashed, but we got better. In 08, we came out there, and smashed everybody. Won four events in a row. So I saw my I saw my improvement. Like I felt it, and I put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of time. And from from 08, and on, like, sky was the limit to me. You know, at that time, you know, I never told people, but I was in the high, you know, like, probably 200000 a year. Is what I was making, playing paintball. Damn. But you, don't say damn. I put in the work. <laughs> you, know, you, you was not willing to put in the work I put in, not playing-wise, not practicing-wise, but I'm talking about all the traveling. Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Has hustling. Yeah, you weren't willing to do that hustling. No, no he was not. <laughs> you know that hustle, right? Oh, I'm right. still, I'm yeah, still right. doing it, man. I know you said, yeah. bruh, that's, hey, if we want it, we could go get it. If yeah. you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Dude, I want to point out something about Colt, too, uh, which truly impressed me. I mean, I've seen him play a handful of times. But, man, I saw a picture of him doing, like, a just a lateral slide, right, that I teach at every single one of my clinics for 20 years. And it doesn't matter It doesn't matter the, the size or the ability of the player, but some people are just like, no, nah, I can't do that. It's, I, you know, it hurts or I'm this and that. And they just I've seen people give up. Almost every clinic that we do, people give up doing it. <clears throat> especially the bigger guys, right? And I, and a lot of big guys go through it and, you know, they handle it, but it's a little sloppy. They're just too afraid to take the risk on their own and do put in the extra work. So they just won't do a specific maneuver. And then you see a guy like Colt do it, effortlessly sliding out to a corner. He's got a lot of weight behind him, right? There's a lot of consequence if that move is not executed perfectly. And that just shows to the dedication and the and just... I'm sure he didn't start with, I'm going to run full speed and just jump on my legs. Yeah. No, he gradually moved up to it, you know? And there's so many people that just give up because they're like, you know what? It's not for me. It's not going to work. I can't do it. I can't do it. You hear it too many, too often. It's too easy for people to, to give up and say, I can't do it. I, whatever. I'm just not even going to try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the can't part is a real problem in, it, in the world. Now. It is. It's bigger now. It's more of a problem now than it was when we were kids. That's for Facts. sure. Facts. Facts. <clears throat> it is completely different. I was tell, telling my son, oh, yeah, when I was growing up, I, my TV was black and white and we only had four channels. So best believe I was outside. I had nothing to do. I didn't have an iPad, no internet, none of that. So, yeah. So, yeah, the world is completely different. But we could still, we still have to act, actually still work with these guys we have to because if we if if we don't get back to the new generation we don't have the sport to really look at you mm-hmm. know what i mean that's for sure sure and, and hey, Jer- uh, hey jerry who who would you say um was your favorite person to play with oh that's damien for sure <clears throat> for sure here's your, here's your role dog a million percent yeah well rather the, you do you the whole Damien, you know how we got we got with we ended up getting with Damien and them. Um, when we won in '06 and '07, we were we were playing against Voltage, and when we in Chicago, and you know Damien and them from Iowa, Chicago, whatever, and they're on the sideline screaming, "Florida sucks," <laughs> and it's forty of them. I've heard something like that before. Up, like screaming, "Florida sucks," yo, yo. Yo, it was so bad. Like we couldn't coach, we couldn't none of that. And we after the match, we we end up having a we end up fighting them. <laughs> a fight broke out because Dave Simmons' mom and Tim's daughter was arguing. I think they, I think Tim's daughter shoved her. She fell. This guy threw a punch. This guy <laughs> went to throw a punch. And I hit him, and he fell on like ten kids. So it's like I knocked out a whole crowd. <laughs> Manny was behind me; he had a chair. Damien ran to get beers. So my Tali <laughs> was, was, was there. He put his hand up because I was going after him. He was the biggest guy. So I'm like, "Yo, it's forty of them. It's like seven of us. We're gonna get smashed if I don't take out the biggest guy." <laughs> and after that fight, we became friends, and then, and then he joined at the at the end of. 2007 and they both joined and that's how we had them in 2008 and ever since then I was with them and then Tali ended up passing away at the end of 2008 you know and like that. he was one of the Tali was one of the best guys in the world one of the coolest guys I've ever met I don't know if you guys know him um, but yeah he was man, he was he was just a great guy Tali saved me from Damien all the time because I would see Damien and I would run the opposite way because they would just pick me up and torment me. And, <laughs> yeah, and then Tali yeah. would always save me from Damien. He's like, just put him down. Yeah, like, you were so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were so small. You were like a toy. <laughs> it was, I would see Damien. I'm like, shit. And then he'd just come and grab me before I could get away. 
Um, so with Damien coming back and playing, like, how much of a voice um, are you for him these days? Like, are you talking to him all the time and, and trying to? Yeah, I speak. What well, I speak to him all the time, and and you know, like when Damien was coming back, Damien was gonna come back. He was gonna play. He was gonna play on um, on you. But I told him, bro, you play if you if you go and you give it a season in pro. I think when people watch you play, they'll be like, yo, Davey is still got it. But I think what a lot of team was afraid of, I think they was afraid of <laughs> him and Tom Cole always arguing on the internet. So I think teams felt like, oh man, Damien, they wasn't going to let him play or he's going to be a bad thing about the team. But yo, like you cannot, you can't, you can't take what somebody does in their personal life on the internet you can't, you you can't make that. You can't put that against them. I'm like, Damien is still a really good player. Mm-hmm. I think he's shown that. I mean, he's gone out and like there hasn't been a bunch of like you know controversy around him. Like he's gone, he's gone out and he's just playing paintball. And I mean, no, I, I can't, I can't really speak to like the experience or how he's having on the team or what the level up guys are like feel about him. But for me, from an outside perspective, without like the knowledge of what's happening inside there. It seems like he's like in there to to play paintball, and yeah, I mean, I think he's a great player, and he could probably go play for you know a lot of the top teams. But well, I think I they're said, worried about the baggage, right? I know one thing. I know one thing. If AC would have picked him up, like I begged, we would have seen a different AC. You're probably right. No, I'm not probably. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I don't know if you've been no, listening to the show since the beginning, but. I believe Jerry to be right. <laughs> Best believe. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. yeah, that's right. Hey, Jerry, we're gonna we're gonna get a T-shirt that just says "Best Believe," and that's just gonna be and you. There's very, there's very few guys like him though. He's like a glue guy, you know. Like he he does a lot of intangibles. He's a disruptor. Like you know, he, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't die stupidly a lot without at least shooting one guy. Like yeah. I, I think that. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, on the field, he's one of those guys that, like, you got to work I, I, would, I would say by the end of the season, a lot of teams will be looking like, damn, boy, we could probably, yeah, they may be a, they may be a good fit for us. Like, I, I really feel like, I feel like any way he goes, he'll be a good fit, and he'll be a good addition to any team that he goes to, because he's that guy that could, he could do, he could do a lot of different things, up the, up the middle, Doritos, steak sides, the second guy, he could do it all. Yeah, and he, you, you, you should get him on the show. He's got a he's got an interesting story, man. Yeah, we should. Beyond, like all of his like all of his all of his stuff with like you know conspiracy yeah. theories and Tom Cole and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I mean that's a bummer, but uh, on the show I, you know that. I feel like his story yeah. as a person and as a player is compelling. Mm-hmm. And you know he's had quite a bit of adversity that he's had to deal with, and um, and all that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you think about it, from two thousand from two thousand eleven. No, from 2010 to 2014, me and Damien played on pretty much every team together, and we traveled together all over the world. Like, I seen him, and we would, like, shake hands and say, yo, see you in 36 hours. As he goes to Iowa and I go to Miami, because we know we're going to end up in Tokyo. (laughs) Like, like, yeah, well, I'm landing in Tokyo. Yeah, me too. You want to hang out? Nah, I fly American. He fly United. (laughs) You know what I mean? So... So when you spend that much time with somebody for so long, and when I got in the car, when I when I got in the car accident, Damien actually flew in, and he and he slept in the hospital with me for like a week, like fresh out. I'm talking about fresh out of surgery, where Damien would feed me because I I couldn't use my hands. Right, I didn't have hands. One hand came back three months later, so I had no hands. So I couldn't. I had this. Am I back? Yeah, yeah you're still here. We still got yeah, you. Yeah, I had no hands, so I couldn't feed myself. And Damien would feed me when my food comes. And it hurt him a lot because, you know, when you spend so mm-hmm. long with somebody traveling the world, and then you just lost your partner, even if we played on different teams, we would sometimes still stay in the same hotel. Like, he's playing on, he's playing on Infamous, and I'm playing on whatever team. We'll stay, stay, we'll still stay together. So when you lose that partner, right? Like, it was really tough on him. And I feel like that's kind of one of the reasons why he went in 
in a deep hole. That rabbit hole that he went into for that time frame where he kind of like, you know, where people was like calling him crazy. I even call him crazy sometimes. Because some of the stuff he's telling me, I'm like, nah, Damien, that's not happening. <laughs> he, still think we could, he still think we could change the world. I'm like, we cannot change the world. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you that. It's hard to start a revolution. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, we'll write it on the list. Yep. I think we talked about it. We have had him on. I think we did have him a long, long time ago. But yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be bad. And we've talked about it too, especially because he got picked up on. Yeah, now that he's actually back in the game. I feel like he'll be nice. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Jerry, you picked up. Uh, I mean. Not not like you haven't already had a ton of fans of support, but even more now. Um, you know, a couple guys uh, were wondering if you do any life coaching. Obviously, um, <laughs> that's something I think you could do. You know what's crazy, you know, um, Michael. when I was in the hospital, coming out of the hospital, one of them, <clears> there <throat> was a congressman that, that heard my story, and he gave me his card, and he wanted me to kind of, like, come out. And, like, every time I've gone out and I really spoke, it's always been incredible when I always impact a lot of people because, yo, if you, without even knowing my story, like who I am, just hearing my story is insane, right? Mm-hmm. When you sit down and find out who Jerry actually was, mm-hmm. world traveler, like champion, like, yo, all these countries, friends everywhere, you know, superstars, riding around like Rolex, Rolex wearing, Liberty riding. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, Rick Flair, yeah, you could, yeah, Jay was good. When you think about that, and you're like, yo, this guy went through that, and he's still here with that smile on his face, and he's still giving it all. Yeah, that's, that's an inspiration that is hard to really sell. Well, I definitely, I definitely think we got a, a good t shirt, motivational t shirt with you, uh, that will sell. All proceeds are going to go to one of those, uh, one of those tank wheelchairs so we can get you ripping because every MPPL is or NXL <laughs> MPPL NXL is going to have mud on it for the rest of rest of the the world uh Wilfredo says that you're a goat um except for on Call of Duty <laughs> <laughs> so man dude this is uh an awesome awesome time to get you on here I'm, I'm so yeah, glad that, that this awesome. worked out and like I said we were yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on man because you anytime know, I've never really like some people actually ask me to go on sometime mm-hmm. like before and I've never done it because it, it's just it's hard telling my story without crying. I know man. Like, I, almost, I almost cried while telling it this time. But Brian, me too. Every, time I, every time I go back and I and I I tell a story, like I feel it. And it, it's I, I saw that. because I feel like yo, like if I start talking about it, man, I can see I could see that stick of my head coming out the window, but right? and, and yeah, I mean that's why I never really like telling the story, but you gave us goosebumps, man. And and honestly, like I hadn't even heard the extent of the full story before. You never told, I never told, you know, you never told it to me. And and I mean, uh, it, hearing it is, it, it's it's not only eye opening on so many different levels. Like Alex said, you know, you people are gonna want to go back and listen to this and listen to that story, but just like the way you persevered through it. Um, and you know, just not changing your course of action, right? You, you've, you lost out on an opportunity, you know, to play and to compete with your friends and, and, and against your, your peers and everybody. Uh, but that didn't stop you right from still being a part of everything, whether it's a part by just watching, consuming the content, being a part by showing your support. And like you said, showing up to the, to the paintball field I gripe when it's a 45 minutes or an extra half hour drive, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, we got to practice again. Like I got to get up there and we got to do it, but there's something still a drive. And that's the guys that we, we play with and play for. And then everybody who's watching, you know, whatever the motivation may be, but your motivation is, is, is so true. And like, it's incredibly inspirational, right? Um, no matter what it is that someone wants to do, there's literally no excuses. 
None at all. Mm -hmm. And you're you're a graceful guy, Jerry. I mean, we I mean we try. We do a little something. <laughs> and I think that's probably and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm still here. You know, like because I've been a like you know I've never screwed anybody over. I've been a pretty cool guy all my life. You know, I've done I've done a lot for a lot of people, and I felt like God didn't want to take me away from the world. We're here. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And that goes out to anybody, you know, like Jerry did mention it. If anybody's struggling or having a hard time, man, just, just reach out. If the first, the person doesn't respond the first time, you know, try to find them again and, and, and try everything. Cause there are a lot of people. And, and I think one of the biggest things that people struggle with is just kind of admitting, you know, or, or, or just, just saying that there's a problem. Right. No, sure. Um, don't and call Ryan though. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't call don't email the hormesis page because they're not going to get back to you <laughs> but but for real man that's uh that's that was awesome jerry I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to come on anytime dude you're way better than alex <laughs> i'm gonna make you an emoji and put you on the thing <laughs> yeah well, we always see you you're always watching the show we'll uh -huh. get you on here more your, your t-shirt's gonna say yeah, for sure, man. Like, you know like For sure. Oh, I was any... telling Ryan, I was like so excited to have you on because mm -hmm. you have yeah, such great so insight on a wide world. variety mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. topics. Yeah, I mean, we'll get you. We'll get you on anytime you want. Want to come on anytime you're free. Anytime you're thinking like, hey, I'm I'm bored. I've got absolutely nothing to do. Um, and uh... <laughs> we well, probably need to get you two other ones, you and Mouse on at the same time, and then you and Damien because I'm sure we'll also get a lot of good banter. Oh yeah, me, me and me and Miles, yeah, we go at it, we go at it. So I probably talk, I talk to Miles more than pretty much everybody else. Yeah. Me, Damien, and Miles, like we always on the phone. When it, when me, Damien, and Miles to get all three of us get on the phone, it drives Miles crazy. He'll always call me. Miles will call me. He's like, all right. Jerry, Jerry was yelling at me that I've been lazy with Tiger Wear. What, what do you need me to do? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I need to work. Okay, so. If you guys just, first of all, if, if Hermesia is right now, took a bag, put some doo doo in it, <laughs> right? Wrapped it up, somebody will pay $200 for it. <laughs> because Hermesias don't make their price, the community makes their price. Like, the, your community is what makes you. Come on, man. Like, you guys, you guys, it's easy to build it, man. Like, like, in paintball, oh, oh, Ryan, I got, I gotta say this, right? I screwed Ryan over one, one, one year, guys. So I had to tell, I gotta tell the story. So, so 2013, we, we were doing. Um, they wanted to do uh, the the All American Dream Team, and they called me up. They were like, "Yo, Jerry, we want you." Of course, they want me. I was first, first person to get called. They're uh -huh. like, "So we're thinking about." We, we want Yosh. Um, so we want two people from, we want two people from Dynasty. We're going to grab two from Infamous. And then, of course, Tim is always in Europe. It's always in Asia, so they want Tim. And then they were like, yeah, so we'll grab Yosh and Ryan. I said, hell no, nah, not Ryan. Let's get Oliver. And they were like, okay, well, okay, we'll get Oliver. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't hate Ryan, right? It was just, I, no, nobody like, hates me. They just like everybody else more. Jerry, Jerry, I completely understand. <laughs> Bruh, it was more. It, it was more. It was more of a. I told Ryan this. I said, Ryan, you're way better now. But back then, people kind of thought you was a dick. And I was like, but I'm not. But I'm always smiling. I'm like, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's something about. This. <laughs> he was like, he was like, yeah. You're not the first person that said that. <laughs>
Nah, nah, he's always up to good, up to, up to something that no good. He's always up to no good because yeah, he's nah, smiling. Let's bring, let's bring Oliver. Yeah, 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 yeah great. Bring Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ryan. Oh, man. And Ryan didn't even know he, I took money from. I took money from his, from his daughter. <laughs> 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 bro, I, I took money from your daughter, bro. Don't worry. He, he got me. He got he got that back out of me when he invited me for three years in a row to this big game and. <laughs> All, the whole time he's getting paid, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting nothing. I just get, I'm getting the trip and I'm going to have a good time with these guys. And it, it comes out that he's getting his check and my check. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. Don't listen to that. That does, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. <laughs> that story is... Ryan's like, I'm just going for fun, Alex. <laughs> Mostly false. <laughs> Mostly false. That did not happen. And then he's like, Alex, here, drink all these, drink all these alcohol and entertain these guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was yeah. just like, where do we pay for the drinks? I'm like, here, just give yeah. me the cash. I'll pay them. I'm like, it's an open bar, dude. Don't tell them. It's an open bar, guys. Don't tell them. <laughs> oh, my God. Like I said, I got so many other stories. <laughs> Alex, I, Alex, I got all your drinks. I'll, I'll buy all your drinks next weekend at Archie's wedding. That's a deal. That's a deal. But you pay for, uh, you just got to pay for a couple of them at the reception. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me all your hotel reward points. <laughs> all right. So drink, well, I, I, drinks. I know you guys got, got to finish up, so I'll just go ahead and get out of here and just watch the rest of the show. Hopefully, I win something. Dude, yeah, yeah. Jerry, send me your send me your address. I got to send you one of these posters. All right, I got you. I'm going to text this. Text. Yeah, text me your address. I got to send you Love a poster. You, Jerry. Yeah, all come right. back soon. Hey, hey, guys, thanks for having me, man. Of course. Dude, Anytime. thank you for coming and sharing. That was awesome. Happy to, you know, share my story. Happy to, you know, see everybody out there. Um, yeah, and hey. That, that, that can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Good. That's a good thing. Speaking of which, before we had to ban one of his accounts, uh, Nima, one of the guys from Iranian team, Dati, says what's up, too. If you remember that's that team. Okay. If you remember those guys. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. They, we have, we've, got, we've got people from all over the world watching this one, supporting you. Oh yeah. Show, show. oh yeah a bunch of people showing love in the comments alright All right, guys alright thanks Jerry thank you Jerry Dude. talk to you soon um awesome yeah that was probably one of our best episodes yeah. yet I would say I mean inspiration <laughs> the story there was great you know I'm, I'm glad that everybody got to meet who he is oh you're still here Alex <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I need a drink. Did you wear that shirt for uh, the our drop today? Do you like this shirt? It's the color of the that we just dropped hey, today. Check it out. That's a cool shirt. Wow. Oh, it's a little. It's a. Dude, that's, that's a sick. rad shirt. Yeah, go to the Marcus. Uh, you'd appreciate this cow because it's like the it's like the thick material and like yeah. kind of like the modern like baggy tall fit yeah oversized is it like shirt. a is it a medium length long sleeve or what is that it's sleeve a medi- it's a medium shirt but it fits kind of like in the body like a lo- like a long like a mm-hmm. large bit it's oversized like, yeah. a little bit yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it looks really nice yeah um, um so yeah hit up that when's the drop Kyle yeah I was about to, to say it was at 5 it was at 5 so oh, yeah. Get, yeah get over there um yeah we we already we went live i just didn't want to that was right in the middle of uh jerry's epic story so i I wasn't gonna um i wasn't gonna take the light off of that that's a nice photo man on the the home page yeah it has to be dropped yeah enrique took that yeah guys go over the tigerware website uh tigerware.co yeah Um, and if you don't i saved a few to um to have it uh wc PPL this weekend at our booth, so cruise let's out there. Um, let's see here. If um, you don't get it online, thirty-four. Yeah, I wanted. There was a bunch of more questions I want. I wanted to have him. I wanted to have him tell us some just some funny stories and anecdotes. He's got so many funny stories from his travels. Yeah, yeah. It's like every time, and like like he said, every time that uh, that him and Damien were together, it was just like the funniest story. Yeah. you could ever. We should. That imagine. would be a great. Uh, I mean, and he, he he is he's definitely a character, and so is Damien. You should have those guys on just to to, to shoot the shit and tell some of the stories. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, I mean, this was just uh, it was too uh, too poignant. Um, since you know, I guess it was the first time you had Jerry on. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I think 
it's important that people, you know, hear what, hear his story. I mean, it certainly was for me. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, and for everybody who just jumped on, <laughs> there's free shipping, Kyle. Nice. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. You, you guys missed a bunch. <laughs> Whenever you jump on at uh, ten minutes to six. Uh, on the on the you know 100 or one hour and 59th minute <laughs> you know you're you missed a bit you missed a bit but this is definitely something that you guys want to go back and watch this one run it back a couple of times like you said oh, actually i want to show this one too. Oh, wait, show the hats show the oh hats. yeah show the hats. somebody was asking about these hats uh we're gonna we're gonna be released at wcppl this weekend but they'll be up next bring them back like, next week online um and then same thing with these shirts we don't really have that many left because we release them at um, in Texas at the so NXL um, but if I have any left there we, go. we will those Southwest Series headbands will also be up next week um, but yeah we're kind of just making some stuff exclusive to uh, the event hey do you ship these headbands uh yeah me or okay, lamb so I just ordered one but I forgot to put the sweet it's sweet B as in boy okay I'll, uh, wait what's sweet B it's it's uh, sweet D is in D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I keep shipping things to sweet D. Have you guys been messing? Have you guys have been trolling me for the last uh, couple of years? No, we used to be at sweet D. Now we're in sweet B. Oh boy. Yeah, we were gonna move to sweet C, D's nuts, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it doesn't really matter. Kyle, I'll get it. It'll. it'll get it. Um. Wait. Uh. Yeah, I can. I can. Edit it right now. They oh, know me around here, okay? Yeah, he's, he's, he's big news over Luca. there. Yeah, sweet B. Sweet B. Yeah, and oh, did Done. you update? Did you update B. his phone number? Six one nine six zero two four four. Now all you need are two numbers. <laughs> that's the um, that's the easiest way to get a plug from Alex is as long as you text him <laughs> multiple yeah, times. Bring you down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, show you got to show that video of this thing. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I meant to, I meant to get it up here. Let me send it to, to the computer. Can we like, pull this out yet? Or? Yeah, let's uh, let's 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 pull this thing out. So we got surprised here by Dan White. Uh, over the you weekend. You showed Alex this yet? No, I haven't. I haven't. Hold on, I'm gonna send this to the to the. Here, let me get this. Let me get this queued up. This is pretty fun. That's sick. <laughs> Dude, it's insane. It's wood. Yeah, it's heavy. It's a big deal. <laughs> is it hand? Is it painted? Yeah, it's hand painted. Oh, it's got sap. What is it? Yeah, there's sap coming out of it still, so it's like fresh. Dude, that's crazy. Look at all this. This is all sap coming out of here. Uh, I mean, I think we, we should probably change our country's flag to that. <laughs> yeah. Agreed, I mean, agreed, agreed. Yeah. I wonder who I submit that to as like a petition or a... I'm a little upset that Blake never made us something like this. I know. Blake got one too. Blake said he's going st <clears> to <throat> strap his to his... Uh, you can, you just don't, yeah, don't drop it. We got too much stuff back here. We need to move to a bigger space. Just put, I think it would be good. <clears throat> Here. Let me play this. Let me play this video for everybody. This is funny. So, uh, obviously, this is a studio thing. It's maybe not like a at-home art wall piece. At least, you know, I don't have a lot of space in my house. But uh, I thought it would be funny uh, to pretend. It's called pretend that I was gonna put it. That I was gonna put it in uh, in the house. And so I showed it to Camille. Hold on one second. Let me uh, let me just do this real quick. Hold on. So here, let's uh, let's play this little video here. You're joking. How cool is this? Don't you dare. You think it goes in the garage? In the studio? or? Sloan, what do you think? Should we put this right here? Sloan. It's terrible. Yeah! This is pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Do you know what this says? Speak and stem, Joe. Uh-huh. Do you know who's on the picture? Which one's Dada? Which one's Uncle Kai? Huh. Which one's Dada? That's, so, that's Dada. What? Uncle Kai. That's, no, this is, uh, who's the better looking one here? Uncle uh, Kai? No, yeah. no, no, I'm Dada right there. No, you don't have the... Word. The big smile? Look at that. No. What do you mean? I don't like this one. Uh, Look at all the hair on the face right here. That's oh. Uncle Kai. No, this is Dad and this is Uncle Kai. You're a good joke, Sir. No, Sloan, do you see the dimples? Look, look, look. See? I am wearing that. Mm -hmm. That's my nose. No, this. And look at all the hair I have right here. This is Uncle Kai right here. And what's this? 
Uh, those are my first, my smile marks. See, look, look, Sloan. Now does it look like Dada? No, that's, that's Uncle Kai. Alright, well, okay, that's fine. Okay, but which one is better looking? This one or this one? Um, Dada. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. That's called a Freudian slip right there, Sloan. Because I don't like Uncle Kai. Look like Dada? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it kind of looks that, like... That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Camille's reaction is great. She just, le she just like, left the room. She's just, like... <laughs> She's resigned. That was before. That was actually the original logo where Kyle's face is a little chunkier than. Yeah, it looks like a sesame seed bagel. <laughs> great, um, great, great directing there, Ryan. That was pretty good. That was good, right? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm looking for my first, uh, first major award film for a short. I thought that was good. Wasn't the Fandango? <clears throat> it wasn't the Fandango got accepted. It didn't get. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the Fandango yet, let's talk about the Fandango, huh? <laughs> you guys gotta watch that um all right well that was uh that was a great show i feel like we got a bunch of really good clips and yeah excerpts from we have that to one. Throw, throw some of uh how do we get some of those shirts al i got one for you there's all, he only sent a couple down but i'll uh, i'll send you one okay who sent him oliver oh okay i wasn't sure if it was from the um that other guy who has the dreamy stuff going oh uh ryan freeman uh, there are two guys. No, this isn't really. It's not really a dreamy branded thing. It's just. It's just the infinity. infinity yeah, those are uh, sweet. A little uh, kind of icon of of, um, of uh, meditating, Marcus. I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, I, my hand is just covered in sap right now. Um. So yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, if you want, you can give away some bam. I got. Uh, I got five oh. for you. If you wanna... Yeah, I gotta check the Instagram. Oh man. What happened? I just put hand sanitizer on oh. the kid to get to get this. Uh, oh. What just happened there? Well, I had this open wound on oh, my hand. Oh, you did. Oh, oh, you already had it. Manu I like that. What's that? Ali, he, he wrote Ali Llama, Money Mike. That's a good one. Yeah, that's actually was the title of our uh, yeah. our show. Stick out your tongue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like to stuck on the boys' thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually the title of our show. And that, that actual logo that Money Mike put up there is a picture of Oliver's head on a llama. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, you, you've seen the show before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Money Mike, though. Thank you, Money Mike. Um, all right, yeah, let's get some, uh, let's get some, ouch. I got to look at the uh, Spick and Span, too, because we, we got to get one little... there. Yep, 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 we got that. IG, let's go for a couple Hormy things. And, yeah, we're going to spin the wheel. We've got a bunch of Mega support status membership stuff we've got some hk goodies gen x matrix gear also just as a reminder um matrix gear is gonna have pods for you guys and all of the needs and necessities that you will i guess I have to say need again uh up at the wcppl event so if you need pods make sure you guys go grab them there and let's jump over to the wheel let's see oh yeah look at that thing i've got uh the action track chair eagle so we gotta get one of those things for jerry for sure all right, uh, let's go. Let's see here. We're going to go. Let's go to the main wheel right now. So everybody who's a member right now is going to be able to get their chance. Uh, pick a couple people a here. Yeah, get a couple people who, who did the screenshot. Yeah, like 12 people. All right, all right, all right. And let's move this wheel. Start spinning this thing. Put it over here next to Alex. Little Island Design logo on there. So this wheel right here is going to be for... Uh, let's give a Hormesis headband away right here to any of the members. One member right now. Chris Hudson. All right. Mm. All right, Chris Hudson, you just won yourself a Hormesis headband. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Hormesis. Uh, we're going to do a couple more things. we got a couple HK Army goodies. Uh, don't worry if you're a mega support status member. Uh, we have got uh, another four headbands that are going to be coming your guys' way. Taylor White, HK Army, is going to be sending you uh, some goodies. Also, don't forget, going to be signing a couple of these, courtesy of Jaws Photo. Right there, Taylor White. Another HK Army goodie is going to go out here. And if you guys want to upgrade your subscription or you guys want to join the Mega Support Status uh, uh, membership, we've got some posters that are going to be going, hey, Mr. Chili Borad, I'm actually going to be sending you a couple of things, um, so I'm going to pump this inside. Here's the other 
with all the other stuff right there. So you have a big package coming your way. I know you're in here in the group chat. So appreciate your support. Um, and just as a reminder, guys, <clears throat> we uh, we do really appreciate everything, uh, all the donations and all of Dude Vegas Venom coming up again. Just one last weekend or last week. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff that we're going to be giving away uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a TFX3 from uh, HK Army. We've got that that new reg, the specially milled reg that we're going to be giving away. Um, also a pair of goggles that are going to be going away as well. Bryant Booth, saw you in the comments here. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys want to uh, upgrade your subscriptions or sign up for the mega support status wheel, we've got a, a handful of giveaways that we're going to be sending directly to you guys over the next... Something today? Um, no. not, this, not today? No. Maybe last week? Look at that. Tyler Hansen. Not... Uh, Related to Mr. Hudson. And I got three winners here. I will shoot you a message to on Instagram that you won. Um, if your name is different on here, but we have. Oh, there's Peter Sergis right there. Yep. Peter Sergis won. We have uh, Sharissa Betty and Austin440. I'm not sure how to say this, your last name, Austin, so I'm not going to try to give it a rip. Oh. Yurokovitz. Yeah. Yurokovitz. Okay. Uh, and that right there. Alex, dude, did you did you see all that? No, what happened? Dude, you just missed it. It was insane. Oh. <laughs> all right. Here are the... Uh, this is the wheel for... These super mega support status members, we're gonna be signing, spinning this one right now. Okay, coming in uh, first. Can you guys see this? I, are you guys seeing this? Zach Stone, you just won yourself a Hormesis headband. Uh, and then I'm gonna give one signed away, signed a picture right now. Oh, how's that just happen? Oh, it's blue now. This one's going to Zach Stone. Oh, Verby! Verbal. Verbal. Boom. Dude, winner, winner. That sucks. Oh yeah. Let's get some air was horns Zach, going. Was Zach Stone the first headband, Brian? Uh, yeah, he was. And then Verbal won the next one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then we got Jordan Jackson. All right, next up is going to be uh, an HK Army item. Item. Oh, boy, you gave away three headbands? Uh, you said five, right? Yeah, I did, but how many did you give away so far? Uh, four, I think. Mr. Joe Rivers. Dude, Alex is on it, man. Uh, Gen this one's going to go for to, uh, let's go uh, Gen X prize right here going to Mr. Oh it's Jordan Jackson what again damn Jordan Jackson won two things yeah dude and I, I pushed damn. the shuffle button a bunch okay uh, we are going to go one picture and uh, one more headband right here damn. back to back let's go I identify as all winners STK iron David Stufflebeam going with a Hormesis headband. Okay, now I'm going to go with this picture. One here, and then we're going to jump over to the other wheel and send out another picture. Jay Ramos. All right, one more. We've got one, one, one more prize to give away. So uh, congratulations to everybody who's won so far. I'm going to throw in one more signed picture. Each of these pictures will also come with... Uh, that is weird now. Each oh, that's of Aztec Photos. That's my boy. Dude, two photographers won. Two photographers won. Let's go. If you didn't win anything and you have some time and you want to try to figure out a puzzle and you've been looking to buy a Tiger Wear band... 
I planted a little Easter egg in the video that I just put on my Instagram today. There we go. Um, it's for a discount code that you'll get in checkout for a very large discount um, if you can figure it out. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Where do, you, where do you look? It's on my, it has to do with the video that I just put on my Instagram. I'm going to leave it up till they get used. I made it, I gave it a, there's four. It can be used four times, this discount code. Um, I didn't even share it with Ryan today, I, or I didn't tell you yet. Um, oh, I like this. But it has to do with that, that video, and it's not a very large word, and it's not capitalized. So okay, so let's tomorrow. let's get let's get the details again. So what do we do? We go to your to Tiger Wars Instagram. It's on it's on my Instagram page. Your personal one. Yeah. It's on the reel that I just made okay. and put up. It has to do with the video. And it'll be a discount code that you apply at checkout. So if you want to just test it out too, uh, before you buy anything, put in the in the in the discount code and it'll, it should come up. Me? Not you. What if I yeah, figure it out? I, I mean, you can use it. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Um, I I'll give got four headbands here, right? Okay. I've got headband for Jordan Jackson. Got it. Headband for David Stuffelbeam. Got it. Headband for Verbal. Got it. Headband for Chris Hudson. Nope. Don't have it. Boom. Look at that. Now you just made me miss Kyle's post. Good thing we don't have one of those. Uh... Did I get it? For mine? Yeah. No. Uh -uh. Um, uh, thought I cracked I the code. I don't in that address anyway. Okay. I'll look for his. Who's what, who was it? Chris Hudson? Yeah. Okay. I'll look for his thing. All if right. you find it and you don't want to use it, you could share it with someone that, that maybe does. Luckily, I don't have those uh, those like automated emails that if you leave checkout, it sends you an email. Because I'd probably be sending a lot of people that. Because if they can't figure oh, it out. Oh, we got a few of these left. You know what I'm talking about? When oh, you leave no. a checkout and oh, then you right. get an automated right. email from a company. Ryan. Hmm. Shame. Shame. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that Shame. makes a nice noise. Dude, those things are. Yeah. You buy two, you can make that noise. Yeah, yeah. it's like a sound bath. That's what it sounds like whenever Alex is walking around at home. Those things are just tied around his nutsack. <laughs> All right, guys. We've had a wonderful show. Yeah. yeah and tell your friends. Bad. Tell your friends. Margaret sees that I, she knows when I'm coming and then she can run. This is, a, this is a rerun show worth watching to go back and listen to, to Jerry's insight, his story, everything. So we'll definitely have him back on. Yeah. Thank you guys all for watching. We appreciate everybody's support as always. Alex, send it. Send it with the gel blasters. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And don't forget to sign up. HE Paintball will be out there soon. All right. What do you think, Alex? Alex, was that pretty spot on with the noise that uh, it makes when you come in the room?